Hi, Rob here from SkidSteerSolutions.com. I'm here with the Atera Sickle Bar Mower. This is a skid steer mounted version. And what we've got here is an 84 inch bar with a silk cutter. I'm just gonna show you what to expect when it arrives, quickly how to put it together, and we're gonna show you how to use it. So the first thing I've done to remove this from the pallet is I've installed the couplers, put it, plugged it into my machine. I've connected, in this case, I've got a plug and play adapter here, which allows me to run the electrical, which allows me to run the tilt. And I've run some hydraulic oil through it to spin it up and also energize the cylinder so I can lift it up off the pallet. Now that I've done that, I'm going to flip it back down so that the base is flat with the ground so I can put the guide bar on. Next thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to remove these nuts from here, from the studs. This is where the guide bar fits on. You want to make sure whenever you're working around a sickle bar, you have a good leather glove on. These things are razor sharp. They can take your finger off in a split second, so we just always want to be safe here. Three lock washers here. Now we're going to take this guide bar. Down at the end there, you can see the flange. We're going to lay it in here. This is a machine surface, and what that is, is you want to make sure that that thing lays down perfectly in here because this is actually the surface that takes all of the, the abuse from that guide bar when you're hitting things or whatever. So you wanna make sure that it lays down flat into there and, and it's nice and plenty tight here on these bolts. Uh, these are 150 foot pound uh, studs. So you wanna make sure it's good and tight when you, uh, when you put that bar on prior to uh, sliding the, the sickle knives in. Okay, I've got it set and aligned here. I'm just gonna hit it with an impact gun to drive it into play. Just so you know, these nuts are 24 millimeter. I don't have a metric with me, so that's why I'm using a, a regular socket. But what you want to make sure is that these are good and tight. They're metric because this gearbox comes from Germany. Eterra uses only the best in drive systems to make sure that you have a fail-free operation when you're running the sickle bar. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to put the sickle segments in. It's all on a single piece here, and it goes in from the back. So I'm just going to lift this up out of the way so I can easily get to the back of the, of the drive unit. So prior to doing this, or standing under any kind of attachment, you want to make sure that you've locked the arms up in place so that in case there's a malfunction in your machine, you don't have the, the attachment come collapsing down on top of you. Uh, so what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to feed the sickle knife sections through the back of the guide bar. Now prior to going through here, there's a little spud segment that goes in, inside here. I'm just going to loosen this off, drop the spud in, and then I'm going to align it with the bottom of the gearbox so that I can get it all adjusted and set up and ready to go. With every sickle bar mower, you're going to see you get this little kit here. It's got your instruction manual. It's got your extra wiring for your switch kit, your switch if that's needed. Otherwise, you might have a, a plug and play kit. You've got extra bolts and nuts. These are for the sickle segments in case you happen to break one off. You get a full box of knives, even a couple of spare knives. This is the spud segment. This is the part that drives the sickle bar knife. They even throw in a metric uh, Allen head. And for the, the reason for that is that a lot of people might not have this on hand. So they, they give you this so that you can uh, lock this down nice and tight. And then this is goes on the end of your guide bar. And this just gives you a visual indication of where the end of your bar is. The spud drops down inside this nylon collar. So what I've done is I've loosened this bolt off, slid the spud down inside here, and you can see how it rotates freely. I'm gonna leave this loose until I run it for a few seconds because it will self-align itself. The other thing that's important here is you wanna make sure that the mating surface has the bolt holes lining up flush so that this is gonna slide right into place here. You don't wanna have it on an angle and try and get it over on one, on one side or the other. You wanna be able to just push it straight in. You're gonna to torque this down. The torque specs and everything are right here beside here and it says 59 foot pounds we've got the it comes with the uh, the allen head to do it make sure that this is getting torqued down put a little bit of grease on here to keep this lubricated and run it for a few seconds tighten it down and we're good to go so these are the allen heads that hold the, uh, the spud on i'm just going to hit them with a little bit of blue loctite because they do take a fair amount of vibration okay put these into place 
Now I'm gonna slide this butt in. Hopefully it's gonna mate up the first time here. I just want to tighten them down a little at a time on each side so that it pulls the, uh, the mating surface of the spud in nice and snug and evenly. I don't want it to get off on any kind of an angle. So just a little at a time. Patience is always your friend when we're doing these. Okay, so now I'm down to the end. I do a visual check, make sure that it's seated properly. Take my torque wrench out. 59 foot pounds on each side. Okay, and now we're gonna spin it up and just let it seat itself. And then I'm gonna come back and I'm gonna do, as my final procedure here, I'm gonna do up this bolt, tighten it down so that nothing can move. sure that it's self-aligned itself. Now I can get in there and tighten it up. And this bolt we just want snug, so it's gonna be about 40 foot pounds. I know that by feel. If you want, you can still put a torque wrench on it, just to be sure. But we just wanna look in here, we wanna see that this is a solid piece here. That it's come back together and it's good and tight. Once you've got the Atera sickle bar cutter assembled, using this instructional video as well as the manual, you just want to go over and check for things like loose bolts and hydraulic fittings. If that's all good to go, then you're ready to go do some cutting.